uh, in this chapter, we have done according to Hooke's law, f is equal to ke, which can be written as f is equal to kx e extension x extension. Now we have a spring. Its original length is L. Now it is loaded with some load W. Okay, so it is loaded with the load W and due to the load, there is an extension and extension is mired between these two lines suppose it's x so f is equal to kx f is the load it is kx so we can write mg is equal to kx or the material constant is equal to mg over x or w divided by x so this is the expression for the material constant. Now, two springs identical are attached one with each other. Spring constant of this spring is K and another spring of the same material constant K, both are attached one after the other and this combination is called series combination. Now the total length from this point to this point, from the top to the bottom, it becomes now 2L and we have done that extension is directly proportional to original length. Yes, now according to this statement, when this load is hung over here, due to double extension, the double length, the extension will be double. So when this W is loaded over here, then this extension will be double than the X because L length, extension X, when the length becomes double, extension will be double. So we will write F same, now K E extension, extension different, definitely the K different, but the load is same. So dash mean different. So load is W, K dash mean K different, and the extension is to X. Now we can write, k dash is equal to w divided by 2x and the w divided by x is just k so the k dash is equal to k by 2 mean when two springs are attached with one another in series combination their total k becomes the half of the single k so the conclusion is when springs are attached in series with each other, their extension increases, their spring constant decreases, and extension and the material constant both are inversely proportional so when number of the springs are attached in series, these are the just two. If five, six, seven, 11 springs are attached of different material constant, then the extension E total can be calculated by E1 plus E2 plus E3, so on, because the extension increases. We will add extension of the each spring and then we will get the final extension. But the K decreases, so we will calculate, we will get the total K, one over K1, one over K2, one over K3, and so on, because 
k decreases so k's are added in reciprocal form so this is the journal formula when the springs are connected in series one after the other now if the springs are connected parallel now the parallel combination suppose we have two springs both are attached parallel to each other and then load w is hung with them now this w load is shared between two spring so the extension will be half of the single spring if single spring extends by x when load w is hung now when two springs are attached in parallel then the total extension will be half of that so in this case f is equal to k dash e dash so f is the w k will be different e extension different which is equal to x by 2 so we will write this k dash is equal to 2 w divided by x but look the w divided by x is the spring constant the material constant of the single spring so k dash will be equal to 2k so extension decreases but the material constant becomes double mean increases so when springs are connected in parallel extension decreases but the material constant k increases when number of the springs are attached then the total extension can be calculated by the formula 1 over e1 1 over e2 1 over e3 1 over e4 and so on and the spring constant the material constant will be calculated just by adding individual material constant like this so this is the journal formula when springs are attached with each other in parallel combination for example we have six identical springs and they are attached with each other like this first three springs then two springs and the last remaining six like this then each spring when loaded with the load w its material constant k extension e and the question is when the load is shifted over here with this combination what will be the total extension in terms of e and what will be the total material constant in terms of k look these three springs are in parallel in parallel k is added like this so k1 k2 k mean k plus k plus k so it becomes 3k two parallel then it becomes 2k and this is single now when we will look them in this way down so the combination of these three combination of these two and the single are connected in series this combination in series with this combination and these two combinations are series with the singles combination and in series the formula for the total k is equal to 1 over k1 1 over k2 1 over k3 and so on this is the formula for series so 1 over k total will be 1 divided by 3k 1 divided by 2k 1 divided by k so hence the lcm is 6k 3 twos are 6 2 threes are and 1 six are so it is 11 divided by 6k but this 11 divided by 6k is actually 1 over k total so k total will be equal to 6k over 11 
this is the answer for the material constant. Now, we have idea that extension and K both are inversely proportional. We can write total extension directly by writing 11 by 6 E. So this will be the extension, but we have to prove this. So go back to this. Extension becomes E by 3, extension becomes E by 2, and the extension will remain E. Now, in series, we have to add these extensions. In series, extension E total is E1, E2, and E3. So E1 is E by 3, E by 2, and this is E. Again, LCM is 6, so 2 times E, 2 3s are 6, 3 times E, and 6E, so it becomes 11E over 6, same answer. This one. Actually, this is a force. which is exerted at one end, but experienced by the object at two ends. Okay, this is the ground. This is a rod, it is placed, it is resting on the ground. When force F is exerted here, it feels other force in the opposite direction automatically. So this is the tensile force. A force which is exerted at one end, but felt experienced at both ends at the same time. That is called the tensile force. Now, tensile force, exerted per unit area or per unit cross-sectional area is called stress. It's similar to the pressure. Tensile force exerted per unit cross-sectional area is called stress. So stress is a scalar physical quantity so it is tensile force divided by area, force F area A, force measured in Newton, and the area measured in meter square. So Newton per meter is the Pascal. So it is measured, I mean, our process is also measured in Pascal, like pressure. Now, if the material is solid, it is elastic and obeys Hooke's law, then the ratio between stress and strain, we have done strain. Ratio between stress and strain is called Young modulus. So the ratio between stress and strain is called Young modulus. So formula will be Young modulus is equal to stress divided by strain. So young modulus stress over strain, young modulus is represented by E. Stress is force divided by area. Strain is extension per unit length, which can be written as F divided by A times L divided by E, or we can write F divided by E times L over A. Now, it obeys Hooke's law 
and the Hooke's law says f is equal to ke. So f divided by e is equal to k. So this can be replaced with the k. So the Young modulus formula will be k l over a. K is the material constant. L is the length of the material and A is the cross-sectional area. In the case of the wire, this cross-sectional area either can be written as pi r square or pi by four diameter square when diameter is given. Okay, now if the graph is plotted for any solid like the metal wire, force at the y-axis pose and the extension at the x-axis in meter, millimeter, centimeter. For a wire, straight line first, then there's a bend. So this is the graph force extension, right? Now, when the y-axis is labeled with a stress and this x-axis labeled with a strain, the shape of the graph will be the same. So force extension graph of any material is exactly the same as stress strain graph. But the difference is when the graph is between force and extension, the gradient is the material constant and the area is strain energy. But when the graph is plotted against stress and strain, then the gradient is equal to Young modulus. And the area is not the strain energy. It is additional strain energy per unit volume. Look how. If we take the graph, this one, the straight line, and the area is one by two base strain and the height is stress. So one by two strain is E over L, stress is force divided by area, which can be written as one by two Fe over AL. This portion one by two Fe, this is AL. So look, one over Fe is the energy. Which energy? The strain energy divided by area into height, the volume. So the area of the stress strain graph is this one. Energy, strain energy, elastic potential energy per unit volume. So do remember when the force extension graph, then the gradient is K, the area is just strain energy. But when the graph is plotted between stress and strain, then the gradient is equal to the Young modulus and the area will be strain energy per unit volume.